awesome. So we got our strap and um, today our chakra that we're working with, with this chakra week, we've got our last one left, which is the throat chakra. And so this throat chakra deals with the energies of speech, of being able to express ourselves to the world, whether that's through words, through music, through um, art even, getting to the world to be able to see our perspective. It's, all, it's also about speaking our truth um, and even being willing to, to speak up in things that are hard, like saying I'm sorry, those kinds of ideas. So these are all the issues that deal with that throat chakra. And so with our practice today, we're going to be doing different things with the neck, with the head, um, and, and just the surrounding areas, even the voice a little bit. And so, so all of these are just very helpful for that throat chakra to help strengthen it. So that's our idea as we're getting started today. And just like my normal, if you haven't caught on already, I like to start off in Shavasana. And so go ahead and make your way onto your mat whenever you're ready. Just nice and comfortable, relaxing down. And a breath that's extremely helpful for this throat chakra is the Ujjayi breath. And so this is the breath that sounds kind of like an ocean wave or like a Darth Vader noise in our throat. Occasionally there's people that have trouble finding it the very first time. And so my little trick if people can't get into the Ujjayi breath is to make the sound like, like you're kind of trying to steam, um, like get some, get some fog on your glasses to wipe them off. So that sound. But then halfway through making the ha, huh, you close your jaw and notice how your throat is already lightly constricted. So try that three or four times. And just continue that exhale with the, through the rest of the breath. And then try to see if you can maintain that light constriction of the throat that we just discovered. Maintain it through both exhales and also inhales. And so take a, take a few good relaxing breaths, just like that. And so if you need to start it with the ha, huh, that's fine. And then maintain it through the inhale. And take a few good breaths, just like that. Keep on going. This breath is very helpful for that throat chakra area because it allows the air to be like friction to help um, to help smooth it out. So it's almost like um, think of those pebbles that go into a river and it gets worn smooth. And so that smoothness is is the texture that we're trying to find in our throat, trying to trying to make it nice and smooth so that air and speech and everything just comes in and out so nicely. During the COVID-19 that's going on, it's interesting because that virus is affecting people um, in their ability to smoothly breathe in and out. And so this particular breath, it's I just have so much gratitude for it right now because I can take deep breaths and I can easily feel the breath going in and out of my throat. So take three or four more breaths. And then from here, we're going to start little things that help us to notice the neck and all the muscles around it. This can be very nice if we have neck or shoulder tightness today. Um, so this is one of the places where we'll use our strap. So take your head into the back of the strap and then dropping your head down. Let the arms be gripping um, about a foot above the head on each side. And then it's the strength of the arms that lift the head up. 
So the head is doing no effort to be lifted, but we're lifting the head like this. It's at an upward angle, so getting that stretch through the back side of the neck for a little bit. And just notice the heavier we make the head, the better it feels on the neck. It's not about us trying to force the neck all the way deeper. It's about the head completely giving in and just relaxing. Very tenderly, very gently, we're going to start adding in simple movements. And so the right hand gets pulled a little bit further. This will tilt the head over to the left side and then return back evenly with both hands. The left hand pulls out, the head goes over to the right direction and then back. And take that a few times. This kind of reminds me of milking a cow with the hands, it's like I'm squeezing through one hand and then I'm squeezing through the other hand. Just gently supporting the neck and the head as it's starting to stretch for us. Take one more to each side. And then after that second one, Return the head back down. The hands did a little bit of work there. And so take your right hand like a stop sign up to the sky. And then the left hand grabs all the fingers and the thumb and pulls it down for a nice little stretch for a moment. And then flip the right fingers down the other way. So it's like you're trying to show off a ring to somebody and then the left hand pulls down on all the fingers and thumb. When you release, the right hand shakes out. Left hand makes the stop sign up to the sky. The right hand pulls back on all the fingers and the thumb. And then flip those left fingers down the other way, the right hand pulls them down. And with our release, we shake this hand out. Good. We're taking the shape of a bridge pose now, planting the feet close to the glutes, the hands go on the floor next to the hips. And so with bridge pose, one of the things that we'll notice is more and more of our torso starts to lift up. You feel more the, the neck kind of being compressed and crunched down. That's exactly the motion that we're trying to find here. And so take that a few times, hands are resting down, inhale, lift up the hips, and then one vertebrae at a time rises, fill the throat with that gentle compression, and then exhale, roll back down. Let's go about five rounds or so. So inhale, rolling up. Exhale, rolling down. One of the things that we'll take almost toward the end of class is a shoulder stand because that, that light constriction at the throat is actually very beneficial for all the tissues around the throat, especially the thyroid, helping to make sure that, that oxygen-rich blood is able to pool right in that throat area. So let's take two more bridges, rolling up and down. Up and down. Keep the feet exactly as they are. And then moving through the head and the neck, all we do is gaze over toward the left side, head up, gaze over to the right side. And just feel already how the neck is today. Sometimes there's a lot of tightness in the neck and even just this simple movement can be quite um, dramatic. And so just taking a few more like this and then we'll have an option to go a little bit more intense. Once more left, once more right. And then from here, bring the knees over the hips, the shins shooting out at a straight angle. And so from here, arms spread open to left and right. And when we gaze the head back over to the left, 
the knees go over to the right. Everything goes back through the center at the same time. Head over to the right, knees to the left. And you get to choose how far down you go. Make this less about momentum, more about feeling the pause at each edge. Feeling, uh, paying attention to the neck the whole time. <sighs> Inhale when we go down. Exhale, return back through the center. Three more to each side. Three. Two. One. Good. From here, we're heading toward a fish pose before we come off of our backs. So plant the feet back down. We'll lift the hips up like a bridge pose and the hands will slide right under the glutes, palm face down. As soon as you've got that in place and even try to squeeze the elbows in more toward the middle. As soon as you've got that in place, legs will slide long and then rise the torso up. So it's the elbows pressing down into the ground to, to help lift up your torso. Heart rises up to the sky. And then the throat exposes itself as the chin lifts. Either stay like this or continue to drop the crown of your head to barely touch the ground. And just feel the throat, feel what's going on right there. Another good inhale. Exhale, rise up, lift the chin up, bring it into toward the chest, and then roll back down. Once you're onto your back again, free off the hands. And then let's roll like a ball a few times. Bring the thighs into the chest, the hands go behind the back of the thighs. And then we rock ourselves up and back. Notice how the neck feels the whole time. It kind of stays in the, sh the same shape, but when you start getting your hips over your body, you feel just a teeny bit of massage into the back of the neck. And then that very easy release when we roll all the way up to the top. So let's take three more of these. Last one. Coming in toward the shape of a cobbler pose with our legs. And then um, and we start off with the spine nice and tall. And then let the head be what rolls us forward. So normally we tilt forward, trying to get all the way clear down it deep into the hips. Today we start off tall. And then the head starts to round down. As soon as the head can't go down any further, the shoulders start to round down. And it's the head and that that closed off throat chakra leading us forward. Now notice that the throat chakra includes the back side of the neck as well. So here is a chance to compress through that front part as we stretch through the back part of the neck. Notice how it's a very different experience for the body than when we, we go forward for the hip part of the stretch. Another good inhale and exhale. Inhale, roll back up, stacking the lumbar vertebrae and then through the rib cage, shoulder stack and head rises all the way back up. From here, bring the legs into a simple cross-legged position. And we're going to take some time to, to just focus on some neck stretches as we're getting started here. And so the first thing that we're going to do is lift the chin up and we're not trying to crunch the bones on the back of the neck. 
Rather, we're trying to fill the stretch on this fleshy tissue on the front of the throat. And so usually what I need to do to get to that stretch is when I lift the chin up, I then jut my chin forward. And with that extra little tiny push, oh, I feel a nice stretch all through the thyroid. And so when you're ready, lift the chin and then jaw goes forward. Good, relax the jaw, head goes back up to neutral and then roll the chin all the way down to the chest to get the opposite stretch going all the way forward. Head back up to neutral, gaze over your right shoulder. Your right hand can come up to that left cheek not to push the head too far, but just to bring it right to the edge of the stretch in this direction. Dropping the right hand down, head goes back forward through the center, and then gaze over your left shoulder. Left hand can come up and rest on that right cheek. Dropping the hand down, head goes back to neutral. From here, tilt the right ear over the right shoulder. Sometimes it's nice to bring the right hand up and rest it on that top ear. Maybe even extending the left fingers off to the left. From here, dropping that top hand down, the head rolls just slightly behind the shoulder. You're not trying to crunch the bones on the back of the neck again. All you're doing is just rolling an inch or so behind the shoulder. This stretches a muscle that connects right up to the jaw. And then ear goes back over shoulder. And then head goes slightly forward of shoulder. We start to turn the nose down toward that right armpit as if we're trying to smell the right armpit. Roll the chin all the way equally down through the center of the chest. Right there, heavy in the middle. Head back up, left ear drops over left shoulder. Head goes an inch or so behind the shoulder. Make sure you feel that deep muscle stretching up to the, the, that corner of the jaw. Ear back over shoulder. And then head forward of the shoulder, dropping the nose down to the armpit. And then chin all the way back down to the chest. For this one, if you we're holding about five more breaths, if you'd like to clasp your hands and let your hands rest on the back of the head, that's fine. The hands aren't there to pull the head down, rather to, to just be a little bit of extra weight so gravity can do its job very effectively. Okay, dropping the hands down, lifting the head up. We come to hands and knees. And as we take our cat cow spines today, pay attention to the throat and try to exaggerate the motion through the throat area. We're not trying to give ourselves whiplash, so take nice and slow breaths. 
but really exaggerated. So inhale, the belly goes down, the throat lifts up, trying to stretch through that front part. And then exhale, round the spine up, curl the chin in toward the chest. And let's take four more. Inhales, exhales. Three, two, one. Good, rising up to a high kneeling position. We'll take a half camel pose, tuck the right toes and we'll leave them right behind you. The left side goes straight off to the left side, so off that long edge of the mat. And so from here, we're prepared for a half camel pose. Our right hand goes to the right heel. If that's a little bit too far, just leave your hand at the low back and arch from there. The right hand to the heel. From there, hips start to push forward. This left arm reaches up to the sky and we start to feel the throat stretching up and back. The head's trying to rest on the little pillow that our shoulders make. So let's take, trying to go with the ujjayi breath to the best that we can. Let's take four more breaths. After that fourth breath, the hand comes up, the head comes up. We gently lift our torso up. And then from here we come down you can either just drop directly forward onto your elbows, or if your leg would like a little bit more of a stretch right now, you can walk your hands closer toward that left leg. So whatever will help your legs get a nice stretch as the head just relaxes down, nice and heavy. back through the center, dropping that left knee down. This time we have the left toes tucked behind us, the right leg opens up to the right. Drop the left hand to the heel or to the low back, push the hips forward, right arm reaches up, and then as we stretch the arm back, our throat gets that chance to be nice and open. One more huge breath in. Exhale, head rises, hand rises. We come all the way up. We either drop forward onto elbows or walk once more toward the straight leg, toward that right side this time. The neck is nice and loose. And then as we start to come back down onto hands and knees, five times here, we're going to bring our chin close to the ground and then um, so, so we're going low and then up to a cobra pose. It looks like this, we set up kneeling. The chin goes low to the ground. We go forward and then up to cobra. And then all the way down, chin down, even up to down dog. So it'll look just like that. We start down again on the knees, taking five, chin goes down and then forward all the way up. And chin goes back down as the hips go back. Tuck the toes, lift the hips downward facing dog. Drop down to knees, four, chin down and forward, up, and chin down, hips back, tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Dropping to knees, here's three. Heading back.
drop to knees two. Last one, drop to knees, lower under and through. And under and back. Good, this next one you can stay just a little bit longer in this down dog shape. Pedal things out if that's feeling helpful, up to you. Even simple inversions like this can be helpful to that throat chakra because um, any type of inversion where the heart is, is above the throat area, it helps to send that fresh blood through the, the carotid art artery that runs right alongside that throat chakra. So another huge inhale. And then exhale, just gradually make your way up toward the top of the mat. Little steps at a time if you wish. And take a moment letting the spine be heavy. The head is heavy, throat just kind of hanging. Even the hands can get elbows, it's just dropping down. See if you can bobble your head like a bobble head, just kind of letting it wiggle left and right nice and loose. Take another good inhale and exhale. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands down to the heart. Take three breaths of ujjayi, finding that light constriction of the throat. And then from here, grab your strap or scarf, whatever you have. And our arms are essentially going to mimic what our head is doing. So we're gripping a little bit wider than the hips and shoulders. Anytime our head and our chin starts to rise, so we'll, anytime it's just neutral forward, the arm should be forward. Anytime the head starts to rise, if we bring the arms up, arch them back with the, the neck. So if the neck can only go up to a nice comfortable angle there, um, this, this nice forward angle is fine. Um, same with if you have any injuries, don't go too far. If the head is comfortable rocking back onto the, to rest on that pillow of the shoulder blades again, maybe the hands can go slightly behind the head. And then we come back up when head is at neutral, the arms will be right in front of us. And then when we start to roll chin down to chest, the arms come down and we roll all the way into the forward fold, keeping just a little bit of tension outward into the strap. Rolling up, chin is at the chest until we're upright and then the hands just float with it. So let's take that whole cycle five more times, nice and slow. So the arms start to rise with the chin, find your deepest spot, and then back to neutral, the spot right in front of us. Dropping chin down to the chest, the arms come down. Roll all the way into the forward fold. Rolling back up. We're at the start. Let's take four more rounds. Up. Neutral. Down. And neutral. Three. Last one. And all the way down. Good. 
dropping the strap for now. Um, let's take a little flow. Going, um, adding some extra pauses. So inhale, circle up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Make sure the head is nice and heavy. Even bobble head for three or four moments. Inhale, half lift. Spine is long all the way up to the crown of the head as we come up. And then as fingers go down, right foot steps back. Right hand stays down. Left hand reaches up to the sky. This is to help the head rotate so that we can gaze all the way up. When the hand comes down, this left foot steps back. And then we take that same side again into a plank. So right hand is down, left hand lift, lifts back up or gazing back up at that same side. And down. Take a chaturanga, rocking yourself slightly forward a finger, squeeze the elbows into lower. As we rise up to cobra, usually we keep head at neutral. Today, feel free to let the chin rise. Remember, no crunching of bones on the back of the neck, just stretching on the foot. We're gonna tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Sliding the right foot forward in between hands. Leave the left hand down. Right hand reaches up to the sky. This is about the head rotating. Hand goes down. This front foot steps back into plank. And remember, same side again for the side plank. Left hand goes down. Right hand lifts up, gaze up that side. Another inhale. Exhale. Hand goes down. Shift forward through plank, lowering chaturanga. Back bend of your choice. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg clear up to the sky. Step that right foot forward in between hands. And then drop the back knee down. Hips push super far forward. Finding our balance, we bring our hands to that right thigh. As the torso rises directly up, keep the hips pushing forward. If your balance is still here, nice and fine, clasp your hands together, releasing the point your fingers, point directly up to the sky, arms right next to the ears. And then as the chin starts to lift, we begin to bring the arms slightly behind that up and down shape. Exhale, release the hands. If the hands drop down, that right leg goes straight on the ground, half splits. Hands go all the way to the floor if you can. And for this one, let yourself roll the chin into the chest and see how close you can get the forehead to the knee. So it's a little bit more rounded through the spine than we normally prefer, but this is more about the throat today. Unwind the head, plant the hands up at the top of the mat, stepping that right foot back, lift up into downward face, uh, sorry, lift up into a plank, <laughs> and then take a flow, rocking forward, lower down. Nice arch, letting the chin lift today. And downward facing dog. By this point, if you're getting tired of those flows, you can always just choose to take a child's pose or just go straight to the down dog instead. So second side, left leg floats up to the sky. Step that foot forward in between hands. The 
back knee drops down. We start off sinking the hips forward. Feel that stretch. Perhaps we have balance to bring hands up to the thighs. Remember, we don't back off just to come up to the hands on the thighs. We're still pushing the hips super far forward. Test your balance, make sure you're still okay. If you're good, clasp your hands, releasing pointer finger. Arms extend right up next to the ears. And then as we start to gaze up with the chin, we feel the arms traveling just a few inches backwards. Exhale, the hands release. They start to drop down as the left leg goes straight. This is the one where we bring the chin in toward the chest and see if we can drop the forehead close to the knee. back up to the sky. Step it forward and through in between hands. Back heel goes down. Float the arms up. Right next to your ears, warrior one, we're facing toward the top edge of our mat. From here is the right hand drops to the back side. We gaze down over our shoulder, trying to let the head relax to that direction a gentle neck stretch. The other arm is trying to stay pointed up to the sky. This right hand floats back up. Inhale. Exhale, rotate open warrior two. We're gazing over the front fingers. So the neck stretching to that direction. Extended side angle, either the front elbow drops down or the front fingers go down. Once you've got yourself set up, gaze up to the sky, and then the top arm continues to stretch forward. Huge inhale to rise, warrior two. And then reverse warrior, left hand drops down, gazing upward. The top hand traces up and then maybe slightly backward. Notice how perhaps through all these positions we've done them before, but maybe we haven't paid attention to the head so much. Good, so rising back up. From here, we'll shorten our stance just a little bit, preparing for half moon pose if we have that balance. And so we start to shift our weight onto the front right leg. The fingers drop to the outside angle of the foot, so the fingers are off the mat. The hip stack, the shoulder stack, and if our gaze is possible, try to float the gaze up toward the sky, up to the top thumb. Inhale. Exhale, complete forward fold. Feet drop, arms drop heavy. Head is bobble head again. Flowing back from here, inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step walker jump to plank, lower chaturanga. Back bend. Feel the throat stretch and downward facing dog. 
Left leg floats up to the sky. It steps forward in between hands. Back heel goes down. Arms float up to the sky, warrior one. Left hand drops to the back thigh. The spine rotates, gaze over that left shoulder downward. And this right hand continues to stay pointing up to the sky. Gentle rise up, inhale. Exhale, rotate open, warrior two. Gazing over front fingers. Extended side angle. Front elbow drops down or front fingers down. As we gaze up to the sky, the other arm starts to travel forward. Exhale, float back up, warrior two. Reverse warrior, left fingers down, sorry, right fingers down to right leg. Gazing up, left fingers extend upward and maybe also slightly behind that upward position. Return back up, warrior two. Perhaps shortening the stance, preparing for half moon, if you have the balance today. If not, just meet at the forward fold. And so we start to take our weight over that left leg. Left fingertips go super wide to the left. The hip stack. The shoulder stack. Hop and hand reaches up and we gaze up to it. And then exhale, hand and foot, everything drops to the forward fold. Feel yourself releasing long. Bobble head ahead. heels lifting and your hips sitting down into a little squat ball. If you have this balance, walk the fingertips as far forward as you can reach and drop the forehead down to the knees to stretch through the back side of the neck. And then leave one hand in front of you, one hand behind you, lowering hips all the way back down to the ground. Come to a simple cross leg position. And here we'll grab our strap again. This time, if you have the space for it, we're trying to go super wide so we can rotate our arms all the way through the shoulder socket. If, you're, if your strap doesn't go that wide, just, just go up and down a few times. So we're gonna try to go for three full cycles. Grip super wide, the elbows are not allowed to bend the whole time. So we go up, we see if we can travel back behind. If we can't and we get stuck, Slide your hands wider until you can go all the way back behind you. If that was too easy, start scooting your hand a little bit closer. Keep your elbow straight as you come all the way back up and forward. Just two more of those. Remember, you can go wider or narrower based on what your experience is. Elbows do not bend though. We're not trying to cheat our way back. Nice and wide all the way back all the way forward let's just go for one more bonus up and back up and over set the strap down open both arms out behind you arms level the shoulders exhale right hand crosses over the body left hand wraps around that to hug it in and i like to drop my head over the left shoulder so this exaggerates the stretch on the right side. Huge inhale, circle both arms open. Exhale, left arm crosses over the body, right arm hugs around it. 
head tries to drop, drop over to the right side. Release, inhale, both arms open. And from here, leaving this left foot crossed down in front of you, take your right foot and extend it upward. If you can't grab on with your hands, grab your strap and use that. We're starting off with both hands grabbing on. And as the leg floats all the way up, we're trying to do that rounding of the forehead to the knee. Again, normally we focus on a straight tall spine. Today it's about the throat chakra. So just let the head round down, feeling that stretch of head down to knee. Good, straighten the spine. Take this left hand to the outside of the foot, or if you can't reach foot, ankle, calf, whatever you can, or strap. And from here we cross the leg past midline. The leg is trying to go far over to the left side. At the same time that the right arm opens up behind you, gaze to that right thumb. Trying to allow the neck one more chance to gaze clear over to that side. And return. Release, this right foot drops down in front of you. Hands clasp around the left foot or use the strap. The leg extends all the way up. Letting the spine be as round as it needs to, we just let the throat chakra collapse down and then lift that knee up as close as we can get it to the forehead. Good, straightening back up through the spine. Right hand takes the outside edge of the foot. The leg crosses over to the right. So that this gets us into the IT band a little bit. And then as this left arm opens, we gaze over our shoulder toward that left thumb. Another good inhale. And exhale, release. And here we take our shoulder stand that I promised earlier. The shoulder stand isn't one that you want to do today. You can just float your legs up and stretch them up to the sky or bring your legs up to the wall. Either of those would be fine. If you're taking the shoulder stand, most people I know go to it from rolling. And so you roll as soon as your hips are over your shoulders. You bring your hands to the low back. Start to walk the elbows in, and then the legs start to float upward to the sky. So from here, feel this gentle, gentle um, compression through the throat chakra area. Notice how it is possible to do the ujjayi breath even with this head going forward of the, of the shoulders like this. You can either stay in shoulder stand or start heading to plow pose. Leave both legs together. The hips need to travel slightly behind your body as the legs come closer to the head. That helps to counterbalance you so the spine's not taking too much pressure. And then from here, you test the waters and see if the toes can reach the ground. If they do, hands can drop down or clasp behind you. If the toes don't touch the ground, then just leave the hands at that low back to keep it nice and safe. Preparing to drop down, the hands plant on the ground like huge brakes. We're rolling out one vertebrae at a time as slowly as we can to fill that extra space in between each and every vertebrae. Lots of length, lots of spaciousness happening. 
then as our spine returns down, we'll take one more fish pose. Plant the feet, lift the hips up, slide the hands under the glutes, even walking the elbows in closer to the center. Extend the legs long. Rise up to our nice elbow propped position. Heart lifts up, head rocks back. Either stay here or continue to drop the crown of the head to barely touch the ground. Remember, don't let the heart drop down. This is all about the heart lifting so that the throat can just be a continuation of the spine. Another good inhale. A good exhale, bring the chin into the chest, roll onto your back, free off the hands. If there's any little movements you still need, take them. Maybe you're taking a little twist to each side. Any little things that feel extremely helpful to the spine right now. And I'll help us connect back to the throat chakra as we're doing these last couple of poses, whatever poses you're taking, like a little twist, a little happy baby until eventually you're ready to release into your Shavasana pose. So sometimes we feel a frog in our throat. That's like the anti-open throat chakra. That's like that plug happening right there. And so our goal in opening the throat chakra, opening all these tissues around it, is to have this greater health so that when we need to speak our our truth, we have the courage and we know the right words to say rather than getting that immediate plug, that frog popping right into our throat. So think about if there's any things in your life that need this throat chakra energy, that need our creative force, places where the world needs our perspective, places where we need to say sorry, places where we need to say, I love you, I forgive you. And as we connect with all these energies, let's return back to our ujjayi breath, that light constriction of the throat. And as best as we can, let's try to maintain that ujjayi breath through the duration of our Shavasana pose today. We got a few more minutes, just breathe. Begin to deepen the inhales and the exhales. Introduce little movements back to the fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually rolling over to a nice fetal position on one side. 
Take two more good breaths until we are ready to rise up to a comfortable seated place. As we rise up comfortably, we'll bring our hands to our heart. And one little thing I alluded to at the beginning is that um, singing and chanting is another way to help open up the throat chakra. And so as we wrap up our practice today, um, what I'd like us to do is sing the, the words Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And so if you don't know this little chant, it's a pretty common one. If you don't know it, just listen the first one and try to join in for the second and third. We'll do it three times total. So it goes like this. Shanti Shanti Om Shanti 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 So that means Om Peace, Peace, Peace. And so with our throat chakra helping us to lead us toward a greater connection to people so that we can have a greater amount of peace around us with that idea to help lead us forward we'll wrap up with um the word the wonderful sacred word we share namaste may the light in me honor the light in you and may we be filled with light and happiness and peace Thank you.